Hey, what's going on guys? Indy here with Ultimate 2 Reviews. Today we're taking a look at Metabo HPT's all new 36 volts, the stud circular saw. Uh, this thing has a model, model number of C3607DB. Uh, so Metabo HPT has doing a lot of new tools this year, a lot of new multi-volt stuff. Um, I think this has been up for a little while now, but it hasn't been, you know, super available. I haven't really seen it too, too, and too frequently. Um, a lot of cool stuff on this saw. I will say my first impression of the saw was this thing is absolutely massive for a top handle saw. Um, I mean, it, it almost feels a little bit bigger even than like the Makita 36 volt top handle saw. Um, you know, I feel like they could have put this battery to the side here, would have made this a little more compact shelf the back. And there's a lot of just, you know, just space here. Um, so let's get some measurements here. Um, you're going to be total with the shoe. I think this battery sticks out actually almost a little bit farther here. You're basically 12 inches here from end to end. Um, your width here, because this motor is just massive here. We're going to be about with the shoe here, just under 10 inches there. Just huge here. And let's get this all the way down here. So our height here with the blade, about 12 inches there as well too. So got a really big saw here. Of course, this thing is heavy. You want to be using the larger multi-volt batteries with this thing, of course. And of course, it's got a ton of power. You know, it's got the big seven and a quarter inch blades. So you get lots of cut depth. Um, I had someone ask me if there was any bevel stops on this. There unfortunately is only one at about 45 degrees. And these are definitely, I don't know a lot of new saws, these can be tight, but this thing is not the easiest one to use here. So this is just bevel stops there at 45 and you are all set. Now this is not the indicator here. It's actually gonna be right here on this little thing here. It's really hard to see. And I saw this in another Amazon review actually, um, where someone said that the um, cut depth was also very hard to kind of read on there too. So check this out on the cut depth. It's almost impossible to read here. I'm in great lighting and I mean, I'm gonna have to get like a white sharpest thing here to read this right here in the back. I mean, it is super difficult to read that. Looks like about a quarter inch there, and I'm down to about two inches there on the bottom, but not the easiest to read. It, it's very small lettering that is just barely engraved. Of course, it's then painted over there too. So let's see what this thing weighs, and we'll compare it to the Makita. This is the Makita 18 volt brushless. Now, totally different saw here. This is a six and a half inch saw, totally different thing here. But I want to show you some of the features on here that are kind of a little bit weird on the Metabo um, compared to the Makita, just as a reference here. So let's check out the weight of this thing first. So without battery, uh, Metabo HPT says this is a 9.7 pound saw here. We are with battery, we are 10 pounds, 7.4 ounces. Um, this thing is, I will say, very bulky, very heavy is what I... Basically, my first impression is when I first use this saw. Let's check out the Makita. Of course, I'm using that's just a reference, not as actual direct comparison for this saw here. Coming in at 7 pounds, 8.4 ounces. So, you know, definitely the metabolism going to be a lot heavier on things. And one of them, like the Makita XGT rear handle saw, that one was, I think, around 12 pounds. This thing is just a beast. Um, for just hauling it anywhere, but it's got tons and tons of power. But I want to show you a few odd things about the Metabo HPT that I think Metabo kind of dropped the ball on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Metabo HPT the advantage here. I'm going to turn on that little uh, silent mode here, which allows the allows the saw to run at a slightly slower RPM and basically the quietest saw in its class, which it definitely is. Here, take a listen to this. Now take a little, take a listen to the Makita, much smaller saw, of course, only a six and a half inch blade. Very big, very big difference there in sound. I listen to the Makita's probably about 10, 20% louder. Now check this out. This is some, something that kind of bugs me here a little bit, is notice how fast, and I'm not a big fan of these Metabo HPT soft starts. I wish it would just go. Um, check out how slow the Metabo is to get to full speed compared to the Makita. And when I release the triggers at the same time, Notice how slow the Metabo is at breaking that blade. Check this out. It's a pretty noticeable difference. And I use a lot of Makita tools, and it's very, very noticeable on a lot of Metabo HPT stuff. Um, I will say the silent mode on this thing, you can definitely feel the lack of power. Um, when you're pulling it off silent mode, which is just a little button up here, 
And it's not like it's like super well explained what that is. You know, if you got to read the manual, I don't definitely understand. Hey, that's your silent mode. Basically just, you know, a lower mode. Think of it like an impact driver in mode one versus mode two is basically what it is. And check this out. It sounds like a mechanical, a mechanical switch in there. It's actually pretty loud when I hit that button. It's kind of interesting there. But anyways, a few other things here I noticed too. The rafter hook really seems to kind of get in the way on this saw. So you can, of course, move it straight, which is worse. You can move it over here, which is now in front of your handle. I'm not really a fan of this whole rafter hook situation here. Like the Makitas, they put them, you know, over the handle like this, which makes a lot of sense. This doesn't get in the way too much, and that just clears the handle there, so you can then move this around and hook it on right there. That's, I think, the better design here, as in this thing does get in the way pretty easily on this already massive saw. That's kind of the one downside there that I'm not a huge fan of. I will say, though, it's got tons and tons of power. Coming in, you know, under $200, it's kind of expensive, but we do have a lifetime warranty on this thing. Now, is this going to be my first choice for a rear handle saw? Probably not. I, I, when I'm cutting with it, I definitely felt the lack of power with it. You know, it didn't, didn't matter if I was in the low speed mode, the high speed mode. Um, it just, something about Metabolite PT saws, they just seem like something's holding back in them. They seem like you get a lot of cuts per charge, but they're definitely not the fastest saws. Whereas this Makita definitely can definitely cut faster. I didn't do a comparison on these two together, but I'm using both of them quite a bit now. It definitely feels like the Makita is significantly faster going through wood, whereas the Metabo HVT kind of likes to just take its own sweet time there going through wood. So a couple of downsides on the Metabo, you know, it's hard to tell the depth gauge. It's pretty bulky, you know, like you think that they would have this battery go on the side to kind of save some of the, you know, just the overhang off the back here have been a great design there. Of course, it's multi-volt, so you can plug this in, which is also awesome. But it's it's a, just a very bulky saw. I feel like they could have did a little bit better design here, making this thing, you know, just a little bit smaller, a little more comfortable. This rafter hook should have had a better design here. It does get in the way, I've noticed quite a bit. But if you were doing a cut, maybe off to this side, it's hard to get your hand around, you know, and you're hitting the rafter hook. You can't really move it, you know, in a good spot. You put it here, and you can hit something on this side. So just not a great spot for that rafter hook, which that went somewhere else exactly. It have been great there. And I will say, of course, you know, change the blade out as soon as you can to a Diablo blade. Um, nothing wrong with the Metal HPT blades, but I've always run Diablo blades on all my saws, and they always cut absolutely amazing. So, guys, Metal HPT, they're all new. The stud saw. I think it's a great saw. You know, if you can definitely get it on sale, it's definitely not going to be class leading in really anything other than being, of course, very, very quiet, which I will definitely give it that. One of the quietest saws out here. Absolutely amazing how quiet it is. It's super noticeable. Take a listen to this one more time here. I can definitely hear the difference there. I'd say 10-20% difference in just how much more quieter the Metabo HPT is there. So, guys, that's my whole review on this new saw. You know, it's not blowing anything out of the water here, but Metabo HPT makes some awesome tools, and I like their reliability, their durability, and of course their warranty is absolutely fantastic. But again, they're not leading in power really or anything. You know, they're just kind of, you know, keeping the tools reliable, keeping them running, and of course, you know, not pushing them too far like other brands like Milwaukee and DeWalt will always try to do. You get that extra, you know, 10% of power. Whereas Metabo HPT is definitely, you know, aiming for a more reliable tool here. But I think it's a comfortable tool, definitely heavy, definitely bulky, but that's what the saw needs to be to get the job done. So guys, thanks for watching. Take care and have a great day.